All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how the different bands travel in a gel and also a little bit about the different concentrations of gel. The two most common concentrations that high schoolers are going to use are a 0.8% and a 1% agarose solution. Most of our things that we use at the Biotech Academy are 0.8 because agarose is very expensive, about a dollar a gram. And so that 0.2% difference can be a savings of 20 cents per gel. And so we're going to go ahead and draw a gel and I'll label everything for you. All right, if this is the negative end and the positive end, remember we're going to load our DNA at the negative end because DNA samples are negatively charged. Okay, so those represent the wells. And as the electrophoresis reaction is occurring, the negative current here is going to push the samples toward the positive end. And so you may end up with something that looks a little like this. And so each of these lines represents a band of DNA. All the pieces of DNA in this band are the same size. And so you can see here, everything is this distance, is the same size. Everything here, all the same size. These here, even though we have two different samples, are approximately the same size fragments. And so those fragments that are the smallest are going to move the farthest, and those fragments that are the largest are not going to travel as far. And there's a reason for that, and that deals with how agarose is made. Depending on the concentration you have of agarose, it's kind of like a mesh. Okay. I like to use the analogy that it's like the trees in the forest are really close together, or the trees in the forest are farther apart. And so if you have a really far apart forest, the bigger pieces will be able to move a little bit farther. So if you're on a horse in the forest, that horse is going to be able to move fairly easily through the forest. If you're in this forest, where the trees are much closer together and you're on that same horse, you're going to move a lot more slowly. And so if you have a dog with you while you're riding through the forest on a horse, here the dog's going to move even more quickly than the horse because it's smaller. And down here, the dog's going to move much more quickly. And so we have our large fragment here and our small fragment here at the positive end of the gel. And then up here where the gel is less concentrated, so for example this would be a 0.8% gel and this would be a 1% gel. That horse is going to move a little more farther down the band or down the gel and then the dog, the smaller fragments, are going to move very far. And so that's the difference you see between your two different concentrations of gel and, in general, how this works. And so in the police world, they would be able to compare this if it was a paternity test and try to find matching bands. So if this was the child and this was the mother, you would want to try to look at the two possible fathers and determine who matches. So you can see here this maternal band matches and this paternal band matches with no match here. So this one here in lane three would be the most likely candidate for the father. And now we're ready to check the results of our electrophoresis of the homemade dye recipe. And so what we're going to do, uh, my timer has ended, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the power off here, as well as flip the switch so that there's no power running to the system. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect my leads from the power supply. And then, and only then, will I remove the lid from the electrophoresis chamber. I'm going to go ahead and pull my gel from the chamber and just very carefully lift straight up out of the buffer. I usually try to let some of the excess buffer run off so I don't have quite as much of a mess as my students are trying to look at their results. Okay. And then this gel will just very simply slide right out of your tray. You could place it on wax paper, you could put it in a weigh boat, you could put it on a white styrofoam plate. Anything you've got that will allow your students to be able to visualize the dyes. So again, this first lane can be compared to all the rest of the lanes. In this example, these are all the suspects and this sixth one is the crime scene. You can see two bands here, a single band. We've got three bands here, 
two bands, two bands, and one band. And so this will allow the students to take a look at a sample, just like it's collected from a crime scene, and compare various suspects to that. Okay, now this is also a unique example where we have a set of identical twins. We actually have two matching sets of bands on this gel. So I have a crime scene as well as a suspect who matches, but then I have another set of matching ones here and here with a single purple band. And so this is a really great way to put a question into your labs where traditionally there's just compare it to the crime scene, figure out the criminal. So in this case, we've thrown in a little twist with identical twins for our students to have to think and process about why there might be a next set of matching bands on a gel. Now, the best part about this, because it's just dyes and agaros, agaros, which is synthesized from seaweed, there's no reason why this can't just go right in the trash. And so if you look at the MESDS for agaros, it does say dispose of in the trash. And so I can just take this. Now, if you want to save your wax paper or your styrofoam plate or whatever, that's fine. But this whole thing can just go right in your regular trash can. Go ahead and wear gloves just to show that good lab practice. But this just goes right in the trash along with my wax paper. So easy cleanup and a great way to show your students how electrophoresis works without all the expense of real DNA.